Perfect with no flaws at all Are the laws of a love A way of life, a way of life A way of life, a way of life Islam is a way of life الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد Brothers and sisters in Islam, welcome to this episode We will be discussing love But not in a general sense because we spoke about love And I remember some of the classic cool examples provided by Sheikh Salim On the issues of love and the reality of love uh, But today we'll be dealing with issues which can help increase the love Because one of the major problems is that there isn't enough enough love in the air. There's more like hatred. So how do we instill love between the spouses? How can a household be a loving, a lovable, lovely household? I believe that during the course of our series, we've almost covered everything. But this is just a reminder to bring people down to uh, the things that they should do. They should put them on their priority list. Now, what we'll be discussing, they should implement it, not saying, oh, mashallah, this is good, and they're not going to do it. So the Prophet said, تحابو, to exchange gifts, and this would increase the love. So number one, give your spouse a gift, no matter how uncostly, inexpensive it is, because yani, you could buy her a, a diamond ring, and it's still cheap, the way you present it to her. But you can buy her a rose, and she would feel that this is yani, the whole world. I remember I gave my wife in the first year of marriage a watch. A little bit expensive, but not that expensive. Yani, something moderate. Up till today, after 28 years of marriage, she still cherishes that watch. SubhanAllah. Because it was given at the time. And, and this brings us that the things you do at the very beginning, like Sheikh Abdurrahim said, it's not breaking your wife, it's winning your wife at the very early ages of the marriage. And this is long term, it's not short term. You can be harsh, you could be a general talking to a soldier, do's and don'ts. This is short term, maybe you'll find your peace of mind for a week, for a month, maybe six months, and then this will deteriorate. So exchanging the gift, I believe that we've covered this. I don't know if you share with me this or not. The way that you receive your spouse, the reception. I tell this always to, to the people I speak with. When a man leaves his house to work, and if he's in, in an un-Islamic country, he sees these big billboards with beautiful women, you know, knockouts. And he guys goes, mm, subhanAllah, alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar. He said, what are you doing? He said, I'm not lowering my gaze, but I'm praising Allah Azza wa Jal. Yeah, this is a sin. You cannot say, Alhamdulillah, when you look at something haram. He goes to the office and... Subhanallah, Subhanallah. Oh, Subhanallah. And he goes to the office, and if he's in an Islamic country, it's going to be mixed gender office. So he, the, the secretary smiles. Good morning, sir. And the co-workers smile to him, females, co-workers. Uh, co All what he sees are uh, 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 or is smiles. So when he goes to a receptionist in a hotel, it's the same thing. When he goes back home, after a full day of smiley faces and beautiful women around him, the face of his wife is the first thing that, you know, makes him realize this ugly reality. But with frowns. Yeah, where have you been? He says, honey, I just came from the office. It takes 23 minutes to reach the house from your office. Now it's, you took 27 minutes. What did you spend the four minutes? The guy is, you know, shocked. And she starts nagging. Why didn't you bring the groceries? Honey, I brought five bags of groceries. It cost me this and that. She said, yes, but you forgot the salt. You, did, you, you neglected everything and all what you care about is the salt. And then the problems happen. No, a, a smart wife always makes the reception of her husband as an art. She prepares the house as if it's a paradise. And the husband does the same, by the way. So the first thing he does, the Prophet, what did he used to do? Asam, he used to brush his teeth before entering. Why? Because there will be the welcoming kiss. A lot of the guys just come in 
and go on the sofa, take the four or five remote controls. Or shout, where is the and, and he doesn't, yes, no, afterwards. When the commercials, yeah. it's time for shouting, where is the food? He doesn't go and check on his wife. He doesn't come and give a nice uh, comment by saying, wow, the food smells nice. What are you cooking for us today? And she says, uh, X, Y, Z, oh, I love you. I love this dish. How would this, what is the impression that the wife would get? Major, major difference. And the other thing, Sheikh, is that, I mean, inshallah, maybe our sisters hopefully won't be watching, you know, these things. But they may have been watching some, you know, soap operas mm -hmm. and they see all the handsome, well-dressed, well-presented, very charming, suave. Uh, they used to be like that before I watched these things. But, you know, I mean, they're watching these men on the television and then the husband comes home and, as you described, where is the... It's the same thing. It's like, where, you know, there's no romance. There's no, where is it? You know, so he, mashallah, why does he not, you know, also, you know, charm her and walk through the door and, you know, this is both ways as well, alhamdulillah, for him. And if it's like this, mashallah, it's going to be a beautiful evening, mashallah, for, for, for all of them. So the red carpet, the sister, if she has a red carpet, put it at the front and uh, welcome and maybe she stay, could stand a particular way and, and maybe the children can be in the background, it's like... They make a big arrival, you know, the arrival of the, the president, his highness. <laughs> it should be called romance. I think it should be called, you know, uh, love or at least reciprocating. This is how you want to be received. I, I heard something very beautiful. I, I won't mention who it is, but uh, um, someone I know in connected to me, uh, you know, he, when he comes through the door, you know, he... he he like jingles his keys so his wife knows and often she's in the kitchen. And you know, when she hears this, you know, she sort of comes almost dancing to him, you know, and then they have this... On the jingles? Yeah, no, I mean, but you know, she comes and they have this sort of romantic every time. You know, for them, they say this is a really beautiful thing for them. It just like sets the, the scene. They have this sort of beautiful like uh, thing. It's just very, mashallah, I was thinking that's so romantic. Another point I would actually, this is a tip for the sisters, okay? That really, again, make your house heaven on earth. If your husband finds everything, the serenity, the love, the calmness, the peace of mind, the moment he steps out, he is longing to come back. He reaches the office, he will call you, darling, I miss you all. He is already missing you. What if he doesn't? No, let us be pragmatic. If this is the norm, Believe me. We should remind the, the brothers then. Okay, remind the brothers, yes. So the sister, they should be wise. I always tell the sister, the moment your husband steps out, he's not your husband. Maybe he's a husband for many women. In the sense that he's in an ocean of women. He sees all these different types. He is in this ocean of temptation, fitna. So, but if he is content and he, he got everything he would just what is this rubbish everything is rubbish he's only longing to come home some husband when I, uh, he's looking to his wife oh this is the time oh okay it's good it's a time for my relief i have to 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 leave he is longing to go out now make it the opposite he's longing to come back make your house the real second as allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said so reception we said that uh, reception is among the things. What else? There is also what you can say that you should not compare. Among the things that make the love go away is when you compare. When a man talks to his wife and says, yeah, but my sister does this and that. My friend's wife does this and that. Why don't you do this? He start, or even not saying it, even just thinking of it. When you think and compare, you have a problem. Likewise, if she compares you to her brother-in-law, if she compares you to your brother, when what he does to your sister-in-law and the things that he buys and the way he treats her. So many times I get calls from sisters and saying that my husband is not like my neighbor. My neighbor always cooks for his wife. My husband never does this. So she starts to compare and then when the comparison takes place, the love is reduced. So always be content. Can this hadith be used as one of the evidences for that? The Prophet ﷺ said, "Unzuru ila man huwa asfala minkum, wa la tunzuru ila man huwa fawkakum, fa'annahu 
Ahrabi, Allah tazdaru ni'mat Allah alaykum. Look at those who are beneath you, not in terms of religious commitment, but in terms of the dunya. Do not look at those who are above you. It is more likely that you will not belittle the bounty of Allah upon you. Perhaps, you know, look at them, look at them, look at them. So you, now you don't appreciate what you have. Learn how to ignore what, look at those who don't have that. If your husband is not cooking for you because her, your neighbor's husband cooks for his wife, and then there's a husband who doesn't even eat at home. He deliberately eats with his friends. At least your husband is coming home. He's not cooking for you, but at least he's there. You're spending time. So perhaps that should be ingrained in the in minds of the Muslims. Alhamdulillah, we should have a good opinion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we are his servants, we are his slaves. And inshallah, he has provided the best, what is best for us. I think this gives us a lot of reason to have sabr with, our hus with the wife or the husband and the husband for the wife and to always, mashallah, look for the good things. Not to, not to concentrate on the negatives. So everyone has some negative traits. But mashallah, if you find one or two bad things, you will find so many, always you will find so many good things, mashallah, in your wife or your husband. So that's one thing we should always remind ourselves to do that, inshallah. Any other points? That yeah, will add something. The husband and wife, actually, if they have this mutual understanding, they will improve each other. They will improve each other. Okay, so the wife should work hard to help her husband to get rid of the bad uh, qualities and vice versa. It should be mutual help. Mm, yes, inshallah. We'll be taking a short break. We'll be right back, inshallah. A way of life. And we're back. Uh, you were saying uh, that there should be mutual help. And what other things uh, Sheikh Asim can help him? I believe that among the things that increase the love is to be fair and to devote more time for the family. The biggest problem with us guys is that we are always busy. We're engaged either on uh, doing tasks outside the house, traveling, being with the boys at work. My biggest problem is that when I'm home, I'm 24-7 home. I don't have work to do. I'm, I always do my work from the house. But my kids and my family complain that I'm all the time on the mobile phone or on the internet answering questions. So even if when I'm physically there, I'm not actually there. So I believe that we have to increase the time we spend and increase the time we listen to each other. The hadith of Umm Zara, we mentioned a couple of times, is a clear example that the Prophet used to devote time to listen to his spouses. And likewise, they would listen to what he has to say. Does your wife ever say to you, can I make an appointment with you to have oh. a discussion? This is, I get this. Do I need to book in the diary? I said, no, it's not a bad idea. Let's Call the secretary. <laughs> no, but seriously, and, but this is a very good point. And I, I think that, um, you know, you find some of these life coaches, they talk about work-life balance. And, and one of the things that's good to learn is you're not a slave to your phone. That, that phone does not own you. You don't have to answer the phone. No, you can turn it off and you can just leave it for, you know, four hours, five hours and give that time, close the internet and give that time to your family. Because if you don't, Sheikh, I have the same thing. It's the same thing that, and I think with a lot more people having a home base or at least having days when they can work from home, they need to know there's this cutoff point, you know, with the Blackberries and the phones receiving emails. It's like the work never stops and it shouldn't be like this. This is not right. Which is what they call in the West, you should give quality time. Quality time, yes. And this quality time is very important with the kid. I'm, I'm not talking about this from a personal point of view. I am the worst in this. And, and sometimes I justify it to my family and they appreciate it. And I say, listen, I'm 24 seven on the phone because there is someone out there who needs an urgent answer. It's a life or death issue. That is true. So, uh, yeah, okay. There are times that may, it may agitate you, but I believe that I have to be there for them. Some other shiuch may think otherwise. It's, it's an issue of understanding. If the family understands, alhamdulillah. Also, I find that... May I add something here? May Allah, first of all, reward the wives, the sisters, the wives of the du'as. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give them the sabr. And, uh, and subhanallah, they sacrifice a lot. They sacrifice a lot. But inshallah, only 
that sac all these sacrifices they will not be wasted they will be rewarded for them inshallah on the day they meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because the da'i his time is not his he's the people's so the wife of the da'iya is a da'iya the wife of the da'iya is a da'iya herself and she gets the reward and but this doesn't mean that we neglect totally but we try to, to balance and uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may accept it. But without dragging this, sorry, without dragging this, we, I know we don't want to go on too long about this, but for many people out there who are not du'a, you know, this bringing work home and this being a non-stop, you know, there's a saying um, of Sheikh al-Islam ibn Tamir, I think it's him anyway, that, <laughs> mashallah, I love this. He said, treat work like the toilet. You go to it when you need it, but you've got no business sitting there and sitting there, you know. And this is the thing is, you know, you do the work you need to do. We do not live to work. We yeah. work so that we can... He meant the work of the, for the dunya, not the work Yes, yes, that's what I mean, Sheikh. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah. I say not people who are not mm. du'at, people who are working for the dunya. Um, it, it, and this is what often happens. The work comes home, the blackberry, the emails. The, 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 well, why did you come home? You might as well have stayed in the office. And the wife just... becomes a secretary. <laughs> and one at this, work and one at home. Can happen. Any other points? There are a lot of points related to what we say. See, this mouth, it can make it and it can break it, depending on what comes out of it. So, one of the things that increases the love is using beautiful names. The Prophet used to call Aisha radiallahu anha, ya Aish. So, he is playing with the name, so it gives a nice rhyme to it. Not saying a nickname. Now, a woman calls her husband fatso and she says this is a nickname no this is an insult and if he calls her shorty this is an insult so you should choose the name that your spouse loves most and call him with it it's coming out of your mouth compliment what they do anything you see compliment even if there are things that are not that good compliment what you see and especially and I know this out of experience Especially when you compliment your wife or when, you com when a wife compliments her husband in front of their parents and their relatives. It leaves one heck of an effect on them. I could be fighting with my wife and we have disagreement and then her parents come and I smile and whatever she does, what beautiful food, may Allah give her health and wealth. Whenever she does something, I always talk to my father-in-law. Wallahi, you gave me the jewel of your life. You gave me a problem. Oh. She's, she's become the jewel of my life. And, and her father is so happy. You can see it. Illuminating his face. The mother is so satisfied. Once they leave, the wife comes and kisses my foot. She said, may Allah Azza wa Jal uh, reward you for the way you treated me in front of my parents. And mentioning that also in front of your, one's mother. She does this. Okay, she will, yeah. Yes, I always praise my wife in front of my mother, but within the parameters so that my mother would, yes. A little bit careful there, because, you know, there's that, you know, her dish is delicious, like, and so the mother thinks, so she cooks better than me now? Yeah, this you is... You have to be a little bit careful. You have you to know? be <laughs> diplomatic, and also playing and, and joking. Some of the brothers, as sisters complain, they lose the smile the minute they enter the house. And I've seen this. Some of the brothers are so strict with his wife, you know, always grumpy. The minute one of his buddies calls, MashaAllah, the smile and the jokes, and the minute he shuts the phone off, he returns to square one. And one of the daughters said to a brother, said, I wish you treated us like your friends. Why? And he's asking, he's a young girl, why, why my daughter? She said, because you're always smiling and joking with them. With us, you're not like this. Now, this is bad. Sheikh Salim mentioned before that one of the husbands complained that we've never seen the dresses we bought for our wives except when they're invited to a party. And likewise, we don't see the smile on her, their face until... And I know which Sheikh Salim I'm going to say it for him. The example is the Prophet wasallam, how he used to race with the water. We had that already. Race to get the door racing when they're out on one... Uh on one journey and the Prophet said go ahead to his companions and him and Aisha had a race and then some years later again uh, Aisha won the first race 
And that, yeah, and then the next one, it was that this is the, he raced again and he beat Aisha. She says, I was more heavy this time. And he said, that's to pay you back for the last one. So, I mean, this is the playfulness between the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his wives. And just to, he, the example is in Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So saying beautiful things, uh, what else? I believe that giving your spouse some space is essential. See, sometimes when you love someone so much, you tend to choke them without them, without you knowing it. You're so close. So, I believe that giving the other person some space, not a lot of space, listen, I'm going to my parents for a month, see you in a month time. This is not what, what is meant. Some space so that it comes or falls under the hadith of Rasulullah when he said that Zur Rabban Tazdad Hubban. Some scholars authenticate it, some scholars uh, make it weak. Also, the other hadith, Ahbib Habiba Kahounan Ma, Asa An Yakuna Baghida Kayouman Ma. Which both hadiths mean that visit seldomly because the love would increase. If I love my brother and he's my friend and every single day we meet for five, six hours, somewhere down the line he'll say, listen, we have the We have the, the phrase, absence makes the heart grow fonder. Love for others what you love for yourself. Simple rule in life works for everything and it works for your husband and your wife. Love for your wife, what you love for yourself. Love for your husband, what you love for yourself. I think if we had that attitude, inshallah, things would help a lot. Uh, Sheikh Salim. In simple words, just follow your Prophet ﷺ. Make him always there. This should be keep this in your mind. Study so you can follow. And follow the Prophet ﷺ. Follow his footsteps. You will be happy in this life and in the next to come. But there is a warning here. I want to warn the du'as, especially some sisters, they feel jealous. Some sisters, they feel jealous because of the calls sisters are calling. So if you can educate your partner and she can handle the sisters, you will have less headache. And also that will increase the love between you and your wife. I believe that we should always look at the consequences of our actions. If we are able to weigh the pros and cons and know the consequences of what we are going to say, what we are going to do, and look for the long-term strategy rather than the short-term, I believe that our marriages would be fine. Because if I'm impulsive, if I just don't like the, something and I spell it out and I say it to my wife, knowing that after a half an hour or an hour, I'm going to regret this, then I should not do this. Always think of the consequences. Okay, in turn, my piece of advice, if any, is that uh, think about the hadith of the Prophet Ali Sallallahu when you used to make dua, that, oh Allah, whatever will uh, admit me to paradise, whether it is a speech or an action, he would ask Allah of that. And then whatever would lead to the hellfire, he would ask Allah to protect him from that. So if we have that in the back of mind, every action, every statement, if it will lead us to Jannah at home, let us implement it. If it will lead us to the hellfire, let us avoid it. Uh, with that, we conclude the series on marriage. But that does not mean that the show will end. There will be more episodes dealing with other topics. Jazakum Allah khairan. Brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. A way of life, a way of life, a way of life, a way of life. Islam is a way of life, a complete way. Do you know what Islam says? It says that life's the greatest test. It says that life's a borrowed space returned upon rest. A way of life, a way of life, a way of life, a way of life is